So here is Thomas, Global Business Director of FT Pool. And as I understood, it's the biggest pool in the world. Currently we are number one, that's right. Uh, could you please tell us what is this the biggest pool in the world? What numbers do you mean when you're talking okay. about it? Uh, firstly, Sergio, thank you for having me. Very happy to talk with you today. <laughs> thank you. So, The main metric we use to measure the size of a pool is the hash rate. So the hash rate of the customers putting towards the pool and then we are mining as a unit. So uh, for Bitcoin, it, the battle is very tight. Some days we are not number one, some days we are number two. But we're right up there for Bitcoin. And then for about 20 of the other 44 currencies we support, we're in the top three. Mm -hmm. So for Bitcoin, we're the largest and also the breadth of different mining pools we offer. What currencies do you support? Okay, so uh, basically any proof of work currency you can think of. So Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Zcash, Monero, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, and many more. But so, uh, the most popular, I think, Bitcoin. Of yes? course. Bitcoin, the Bitcoin network has around 95 to 100 exahash supporting it right now. So clearly it's, it's the most secured and popular network. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you are the pool. But what about uh, hardware? What about miners? Okay, good question. So our customers are the miners themselves. So those miners, they have mining hardware, whether they use Bitmain, What's Miner, Inner Silicon, Canaan, they have the variety, they have the choice. They can mine with any hardware they want. Then the miners have to choose a pool because if they just had one machine, the chance of finding a block is extremely low. Maybe one in a million or five million chance. If you mine with one machine and doing solar mining, you're never going to find a block and never going to get a return. That's why miners choose a mining pool. So, of course, we work with different manufacturers, build a relationship with them because our customer base is the same. Does your pool private or public? So it's public. So it's any, public. anyone in the world can join. We have mining pool servers in five different countries. So it's important the pool server is near to where your mining operation is. But we're a pretty global facing uh, public mining pool. Your goal as uh, the developer's goal is to build the best software to provide uh, what? To provide what? So I think there's a few parts. So software and the tech side is one important part and the other important part is actually the service because actually the way I see it a mining pool is a service. We have a lot of miners they need to connect to a mining pool. If our service is poor, if our pool server is down then the miners are not mining they're not finding blocks. So from the technology side, we have to make sure we run the Bitcoin nodes or the nodes for any proof of work blockchain and it has 100% uptime. So do you need to have the decentralized architecture of your servers, of your software? Yes? Yes, so as I said, mm -hmm. right now we're having these pool servers, which are essentially Bitcoin nodes, in uh, Frankfurt, Moscow, China, Singapore, and the US. Mm -hmm. So miners in different places can connect in. Okay, how many people in your team is now? Around 30, 30, yeah. And you're based in which country you're based? So I'm personally based in Beijing. Uh -huh. We have um, around half or a little more than half are in Beijing. And then we have team members in Europe, USA, and also in Seoul in South Korea. But uh, the company was found in Beijing? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your customers. What do you think about the geographic of uh, the customers, maybe? Mm. Or some other metrics or numbers? Good question. So looking at the entire Bitcoin network, it's still around 60 to 70 percent of the hash rate of the customers coming from China. So it's still hugely concentrated mm -hmm. in China, particularly in a province called Sichuan. Every year we see the news about the hydro, the wet season. So around 40 to 50 percent of the whole Bitcoin network is coming from that part of China. So the other 20 to 30, sorry, other 30 to 40 percent is coming, you know, we're here in Kazakhstan. It's a booming market this year. A lot of surplus energy. Uh, Russia is a big market. Northern Europe is a big market. And then USA, Canada. So these are the key markets. But to this day, uh, it's still China, which is a very dominant player. And the reason is because I would say the supply chain is mostly in China. The chips, the machines, um, the, the manufacturers, it's all happening in China, which makes it easy to set up mining farms. And also, the mining farms uh, concentrate around places with cheap sources of surplus power. 
So China is one key place, mm -hmm. and the other countries I just mentioned. Okay, so that's why you are here, yes, yes. in Kazakhstan. Yeah, we have a great event here uh -huh. from Nikita. Um, he's done a good job. You know, there's a lot of Kazakh miners, Russian miners, miners from Kazakhstan, and also miners from China all coming here. By the way, how long your company is uh, on the market? We were founded in 2013. Uh-huh. Okay, so, so six so years. It's, it's really the, so the oldest company in the yeah. current terms. So the longest running pool to today is Slush Pool. Mm -hmm. They've done a lot for the ecosystem. They were here too. Yes, yes. we had a panel with Pavel, which was great. So Slush Pool has been around for eight or nine years, I believe, and then F2 Pool since 2013, so six years. Uh, actually... So you are one of the oldest pools. We are, we are. That's great. I believe that Slush Pool has mined the most Bitcoins in the history of Bitcoin, whereas F2 Pool has mined the most Bitcoin blocks in the history of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So we've both been around for a very long time. What do you need to develop to now? Start a new to start uh, to uh, Not to start, but to stay uh, in the leaders. Okay. I'll go back to your previous question. It was a very good okay, question. Okay. <laughs> I actually like that question. To start let's go, uh, a mining Let's go pool, back after this. Yeah, <laughs> to start a mining pool, technology-wise, product-wise, is, is pretty straightforward. Okay? Mm -hmm. The technology is, is not very complex. The challenge you'll face is how do you get enough hash rate that you can operate cash flow positive? Because it's all come down to the numbers. If I have like 100 petahash, the network of Bitcoin is, is 100 exahash. Mm -hmm. So that's 0.1. So you have like a one in a hundred chance or one in a thousand chance of finding a block, mm -hmm. which means because there's only 180 blocks per day, you could go days without finding a block. And if you're operating, you have costs and you're not finding any blocks, you're not getting revenue. So the actual challenge for a new mining pool is to have some foundation hash rate to get a regular supply of income from your blocks. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how would you actually start? I would say... And actually, there's been a few mining pools that have started in 2019, so new mining pools. Mm -hmm. They've started because they have a mining farm already. Maybe they have 300, oh, yes. 500, 1,000 petahash. And they decided to, to connect more people to correct. the farm. Correct. So they, they, they can solo mine, and then they open their mining pool, and then it's publicly facing. So then other people can join in. Uh -huh. But from what I've seen, they're struggling to attract other people to come mine with them. Because but why they didn't decide to join your pool, for example? Is it more convenient for them or maybe it's more economically reasonable to make their, their own pool? What yeah, it's a really good question. So I was talking with our co-founders and normally if you have 1% to 2% of the Bitcoin network, based on stats, you can mine enough blocks to operate. So I think so 1% to 2% would be around 1 exahash to 2 exahash. So you know what? If, if there's a mining farm with 1 to 2 exahash, it, it can make sense because you save your money on the mining pool fees, which might be 1% to 3%. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. And then maybe these um, mining companies have an ambition to not just have a mining farm. They want to raise the brand. They want to do different things, cloud mining, mining pool, mining hardware, whatever. However, I feel that a lot of these smaller mining pools would struggle to take it to the next level to really attract the customers in. Because most customers want to go to it, join a pool, which is stable, has been around for a long time, compensates the customers for any issues so we can see but I think it's very tough to break in right now mm -hmm. unless you have your, a lot of your own hash rate do you have your own miners or not no no only no. software yeah. yes okay yeah. uh, but what technology te what technologies do you use programming language and etc so I'm not a technical person but uh -huh. from what I know is Python last question what do you think about Kazakhstan what do you think about uh, no Sutan city <laughs> you know it's my second time here uh -huh. I was here two months ago um, the food is interesting. The food is great. The people are very friendly. I think Nur Sultan, I've never seen a city with so many interesting buildings. I know it's so mm. random, right? But the architecture <laughs> here is... Concentrated in one place. Yes, <laughs> especially uh, right in the center of the, the city with some of the government buildings and the towers and the mosques. Uh -huh. it's, it's really nice. And then I went to Almaty as well last time. And I think Almaty is the old capital. Mm -hmm. And it's a very different feel. Like here is more business focused. And I think Almaty is more cultural and has more some historic, beautiful, historical, beautiful sites, mountains, lakes. 
I've had a good time. It's been really cool. Okay. And you really feel this uh, crypto boom in Kazakhstan now? Yeah. You, you, I wouldn't you say crypto about... boom. I would say mining. Mine, mining, mining boom. boom. Yes, yes. Like there is from from our research and speaking with miners and, and the local government, there is hundreds of megawatts of surplus energy available uh -huh. at a pretty cheap price on a global scale. So we've seen large mining companies set up their operations in 2019. And so it started in 2019. There was uh, in the, the prior years there was um, smaller local operations taking place, uh -huh. but then it was this year where these large global players started to come into Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, more and more at the conference today, more people are interested from outside of China to do projects here. So it's it's definitely a very interesting uh, market for the mining space. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, thank you. So, Thomas, thank you. To Paul. So, have a nice evening today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sergio. It was yeah. a pleasure. And take five. <laughs>